I show you my stuff with DM Scotty. Hey guys, uh, welcome to I Show You My Stuff with DM Scotty. Uh, today I'm going to show you something interesting. It's actually some 3D buildings that I've done, and most of them are out of card stuff. I've added some other details, uh, a little foam and some wood and um, some sculpty on one. Uh, but most, like you know, 90% of the 90, 95% of the of the building itself is made out of cardboard and cardstock. So these are really easy to make, and they look really, really good. Um, the only thing with this method is, you know, when you make a, any kind of 3D structure, it takes a lot of time, a lot more time than just doing a tile. So, if I was going to do a whole city section, I probably wouldn't do all the buildings unless I had months and months and months to prepare for that. Uh, but occasionally, it can be fun to have like a 3D building uh, if you have a lone cottage or, 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 or a smaller location uh, that you can model in 3D. Um, another thing I've found with uh, 3D buildings that I've always been kind of irked about is that it's always difficult to play inside the buildings because uh, I feel they do it wrong. What they've got is they've got, you take the roof off, then you've got all the walls, and usually it's a small space and you're trying to reach in there and move your guys around and you really can't, uh, it's, it's hard to manipulate everything. So what I've done is I've taken the tile method and used it on the 3D buildings. So it's kind of flipped. So instead of taking the roof off and then you have the walls, you just take the whole building off and you've got the tile. And you've got every, you can even preset up the tile with everything you want on it. When you take the building off, there they you know there it is. They see it. So uh, this is a great method um, for making you know for making 3D buildings, uh, but also utilizing the 2.5D tiles also. So I've got some great examples at my table. So let's go to my table and I'll show you what I came up with. So here's one of the cottages I made, and as you can see, it is a 3D cottage, but it's all out of cardboard. So, uh, but there's a trick to this uh, cottage. Um, you can see I have a couple peasants out here for scale. Um, one of the tricks I like to do when I build cottages like this is if, if I think figures might end up on the roof, I make the roof, the pitch not uh, uh, steep enough so that the figures will fall off. So that's a good little tip uh, you can do. Uh, but the second trick is really to use the DM's craft method of tiles inside of buildings. What, how they do it with normal 3D buildings is they usually, I think they get it wrong. What they do is they, they have the walls to the building, so it's very difficult to reach inside the building. Um, but I do it t totally differently. Instead of having the walls inside the building, I've got a tile underneath. And I reveal the tile by lifting off the 3D piece. So if you lift off this cottage, you can see I've got all the insides of the cottage already preset. And uh, so when the players come in or whatever, you know, they'll be inside the cottage. So that's a nice way that gives you access to the inside of the tile without having all the 3D walls that you're bumping into trying to reach in there and grab and move the stuff. So I thought that came out really nice. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about more about, you've seen me do my tiles and everything, but I, I want to show you that little trick. And um, we have talked about this on my forums, but I wanted to show some of the others that may have not have seen this. Uh, also, um, let me move this aside and we'll talk a little more about the house. So the house itself uh, is just a box that I've taken um, and cut. Uh, I put the pitch of the roof there. Uh, I put a piece of cardboard for the pitch of the roof. All this kind of boarding on the side is just all cardstock. Now I made the shutters and the door uh, broken up because this, this cottage was attacked by a werewolf. So. Uh, you can see that really there it's broken into and everything. So, but um, all this is just cardboard and card stock. Uh, the roof, um, the thatch roof is just um, uh, glue, uh, glue, the glue gun, just dragging the glue gun in uh, lines across the top. Now the, um, the chimney itself is kind of neat. I did this out of a, a thin piece of um, styrofoam and I used the hot wire foam factory and did the stones on it, but you could easily paint, you could easily do a cardboard chimney, you wouldn't have to do this. I just had access to the tools, so I did it. And the top little things on the top are just some beads that I glued on top, so. But I think that came out really, really nice uh, for just being out of cardboard. It's all out of cardboard and cardstock, except for the uh, chimney. Now I'm gonna show you another version that I did 
um, and I'll come back for that. This one is pretty interesting. It's actually a mill, and as you can see, it's a two-level deal. So I've got a little guy here for scale. But uh, let me, uh, so this can come off, this top comes off, and then I've got an interior for the top there. Let me uh, take this stuff off so that I can show you, pick it up and show you more of the detail. Okay, and you can see on the back here I've got a wheel, and this was actually in the water. I had a river going past this, and this was in the water. So, um, move this aside. So here's the other house. It's very similar to the first one I showed you. I did do a little vent um, hole here as opposed to the chimney, but uh, I did the uh, kind of uh, cross-hatched windows that you might see on a medieval building. I did paint it a different color, but I did that woodwork with the um, with the cardstock to give it that medieval look. And then you can see there's a side in the back. So this one wasn't destroyed previous to the fight. So, um, so just the same techniques on that. Now the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, let me give you a look at the bottom. So I've got two doors going into it on the bottom, and I did like stonework around the, um, the bottom part of this. And then here's the, the uh, wheel for the water wheel. Uh, I had, um, now for when I turn it over, I used some uh, wood to uh, hold the top layer up. Um, you could use cardstock, but I had the wood, so I went ahead and used that. Now, one cool thing about this encounter was when the players came up, the ogres were raiding this, raiding this mill for, for grain, and what they did is they ripped this water reel off, okay, and they actually threw it at the player so it goes rolling. Uh, it actually hit a couple players. They got caught in the wheel, and they rolled with it for a while until they were able to get out of it. So that was uh, kind of a fun uh, encounter. Now, in the bottom of this, I didn't put the other one under the bottom of this, but it works just the same way as the top. So, uh, turn around so you can see the doors. So, you would come in the doors here. It'd be like that. And then you lift it off. And then, you can see I've got a grinding wheel here I did. These are just some boxes for the, uh, that they were storing the grain in. So, um, the grinding wheel was just made out of some wood. You can see the wood post and a wood post coming out of here. And then these pieces, the grinding wheel pieces themselves, were made out of super sculpty. So I just sculpted it into the shape of the grinding wheel and then baked it and then painted it up like stone. So that gave a really nice uh, appearance. We had a pretty tense moment when we played this encounter. Uh, one of the ogres gr ended up grabbing uh, one of the players and putting their head down to the wheel and was gonna squish their head under the wheel. And uh, luckily one of the warrior character ran in and uh, head butted the ogre with his spiked helmet and was able to uh, knock the uh, ogre off, go off, uh, off balance and the save, the save their friends. So that was a pretty tense encounter, but they uh, got through it. So uh, yeah, that's, this is a cool way that you can do 3D type buildings, um, but still use the DM's craft tile method. So I like it because it doesn't, with the wall here, it'd be very hard to reach in there and move the guys around, but with the wall, um, with the wall gone, it really um, you know, gives ease of access to play. And then if you do want to do some 3D stuff at your table, uh, just make it out of cardboard and cardstock like we, uh, we've done everything else. Uh, oh, let me talk about the roof for a second. Now the roof, uh, you can see, has, has individual tiles, <coughs> which is, it looks a lot better than, than, than how hard it was to make. It was very easy to make, so I just made um, half-inch strips, and then I turned uh, the cardboard over and I took a, an ink pen and dragged it along the core between the corrugations so it ripped between each corrugation and gave that really cool texture looking like tiles on the roof and I just glued these strips on the roof and voila you know I've got my tiled roof so I thought that really came out nice all right uh, there you go there's some more of my stuff and I'll see you next time on I show you my stuff Hey crafters, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the DM's Craft. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and I have tons of other videos as you can see. I am the originator of the 2.5D method of crafting tiles. I also do dirt cheap terrain for the table. If all this intrigues you, make sure you check out all the videos below. Also, uh, join my forum. We have lots of great crafters on there who give uh, advice. I have a link above and below. And last but not least, remember, go forth and craft!